Welcome back. In this uh, segment of the exercise, we're going to actually create a component from one of those uh, pieces from the Photoshop document that Brandon created. And we're doing this in Catalyst, and we're using Catalyst 5.5. So I'm going to show you uh, two things in this little uh, exercise. One, how quickly I could create a component. And two, I'm going to show you a new feature of uh, Catalyst 5.5 that I think is pretty cool. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this button and I'm going to make it functional. And the first step on the road to making that button functional is to actually select the button. Now I'm going to select the entire folder because I need both states of the button. And I'm going to choose a component in the HUD here. This is called the HUD. And I'm just going to choose Button. And I'm going to name it BTN Download. I like to uh, name stuff just so I know what it is. And now that the button has been created, you can make it functional by simply double clicking it. If I double click the button in the HUD, or I'm sorry, on the uh, artboard, it opens up to edit in place mode. And there it is, there's the up, over, and down states. So when I come over the button, I want it to change the state. So all I have to do is come over to the layers panel, twirl it down, turn off the normal and select hover. And there it is, there's the state in hover. Ditto for the down state. And if I come back to the main artboard, you can see, there we are. And you really can't test it until you uh, actually run it in the browser. So I'm gonna go to File, Run Project, and it's just gonna compile the Swift that uh, this component is sitting in and you can see there it is working there. So I've taken Brandon's, Brandon's uh, Photoshop file and basically turned it into a fully functioning button within about, oh, two minutes maybe. So I'm gonna close that. Now I wanna show you one uh, new feature of Flash Catalyst CS 5.5. When I created the uh, document, uh, the artboard, one of the questions it asked me is, is it resizable? And you notice I selected it. And this is the resize button right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this over. Now when I selected this button or this object, these little things opened up. These are called, are you ready? Suction cups. Now if you click them, they pop out to the edge of the artboard. And what they do is they give you a really good idea of what would happen to this button or how this button would work in the interface if the user were to resize it and you were to lock it down on these sides. And there we go, you see? And if it was just allowed loose, I can just let that go and let that go. And you notice everything's fine until I get to there and now it's gone. So you get a real good sense of what you can do or how these things will look when the users start resizing the interfaces. In the next exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into doing the checkbox, the radio button, and then after that, I'm going to do this little uh, D thing plus the uh, input field, and the final part of this uh, tutorial will be uh, wiring up this uh, scroll scroller. So I'll see you there.